It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Martin Penny from the ERC Executive Agency here in Bangkok, Thailand. And Dr. Penny has kindly agreed to be interviewed today. Dr. Penny, you are part of the ERC Executive uh, Agency. Could you tell us a little bit about the structure of the ERC and the role that you play? Sure. The ERC is made up of two constituent parts. The Scientific Council, which is a group of 24 world-leading scientists who are the managing body of the ERC. They guide the ERC, set up the principles through which our funding is designed and awarded. They make the decisions of how our grants, what they look like, how they're evaluated, um, and how they're structured. Then the executive agency is the body which then implements the, the design that the Scientific Council has put in place. My role within the executive agency is I'm the head of unit for physical sciences and engineering. Mm -hmm. So my unit deals with all of the proposals which arrive in those, er that er those areas of research. We deal with the evaluation of those proposals, then also with the scientific monitoring of funded uh, pro uh, projects in those areas. Uh, the ERC was set up in 2007 mm -hmm. with a mandate uh, to support investigator-driven frontier research with the help of competitive funding. What are some of the milestones that have been achieved since the creation of the ERC? Sure. And you're right, we are about frontier research. And the word is chosen carefully by the Scientific Council mm -hmm. because it's really research which is pushing back the frontiers of our current knowledge. Um, very much. It's, they don't want to be guided by words that we've used in the past, such as basic research or applied research. We'll fund any type of research which is really groundbreaking ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the uh, milestones which have happened since 2007, last year we funded our 5,000th grantee. We're shortly about to fund our 6,000th grantee. Mm -hmm. We now have grantees of 67 different nationalities. We have over 40,000 researchers from all over the world who are working in ERC teams. Mm -hmm. And as, the, as the, some of these projects are now becoming more mature, we have projects which are finishing, that's now being noticed in the scientific press and the scientific publications. There are over 90,000 publications which have been produced from ERC grants, and they're already starting to make their impact in the top 1% of most cited publications. Interesting. Uh, the ERC is the number one funding body for cutting-edge research in Europe. What are some of the funding schemes that are available? Okay. The ERC is set up in a very simple process. As, you, as I said, we're designed by the research community through the, science, through the Scientific Council mm -hmm. for researchers. Mm -hmm. And they have put, put in place a structure to keep it as simple as possible. So we're all about one great researcher with one great idea working with a, with a host institution in one of the 28 member states or 16 associated countries. And these projects then are evaluated on one sole criterion, that of excellence. Mm. The way in which the funding is structured is the Scientific Council has taken the decision to give the majority of the funding, some two thirds of the funding, to researchers at an earlier stage of their career, what we call our starting and our consolidated researchers, mm. and then the remaining research amount of funding for advanced researchers. So the types of grants we offer for starting grantees um, those are researchers who are between two and seven years after their PhD, also allowing for career breaks for people who've had maybe different or unconventional careers, um, or have had to take time out for, for bringing up children and, and so on. Now there, researchers can apply for up to one and a half million euros. For the next stage of their career, consolidators, they're between seven and 12 years after their PhD. Again with uh, allowing for some flexibility in those time windows for people who have had different career paths. Then they can apply for, for up to two million euros, again over five years, or shorter should they wish, but five years is the general size of our projects. And for advanced grantees, then that's projects with up to two and a half million euros. So in your experiences, uh, what skills should an ERC grantee have? A great idea. I think that's the simplest thing. We ask our peer review panels to make sure that we're funding high risk, high gain research. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for ideas which are not incremental in nature, but ideas which are really going to change the world as we know it, push back the frontiers of our current knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so it's researchers who have this great idea and are able, to, are able to, to put in place a way of ensuring that their, their research, should it achieve, 
is going to be something which is going to really dynamically change our, our societies, the way we work, the way we live, um, and so on. You've just participated in two Euraxis ASEAN events here in Vietnam and in Thailand today. What are some of the impressions that you take away with you when you return to Brussels? I think the main impression I have is the potential uh, of both countries and the excitement that the researchers have about the opportunities. We actually don't get a lot of applications from, from any of the ASEAN countries. Mm. Um, we've only had just over 100 applications in the, in the nine years of the, of the ERC mm. from, countries in this, from researchers in this region. Mm. And that's something which I can see from today and from the interest that I hope we'll see in the future um, more applications from researchers in Thailand, in Vietnam, but also in the other ASEAN countries as well. Now, how exactly does the ERC try to engage with the research community here in Southeast Asia? Well, we are open to researchers of any nationality. And I think that's the thing which is the most important. And so we don't specifically target our, our grants to any country. Any researcher of any nationality can apply. We're just looking for the great ideas. But how we engage with Southeast Asia is through events like today. And that's why I'm here. That's why the, the ERC executive agency sent me here to spread the message about the ERC to the research community here. So if you had like a little message to the research community in, in Southeast Asia, what would it be? Simple in one word, apply. Thank you very much, Dr. Penny. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.